Life processes The processes that help the living beings to sustain themselves are called life processes. These processes include nutrition, respiration, excretion, transportation, reproduction, sensitivity and growth. Energy for life processes Living organisms require energy for carrying out their various life processes. They derive this energy from the food they eat. Food contains various components called nutrients. Types of Nutrients Nutrients are classified into three types based on their functions. Nutrients 1. Carbohydrates and Fats Function Energy Source 2. Proteins Function Bodybuilding and 3. Vitamins and Minerals Function Protective and Regulating On the basis of chemical nature, the nutrients are classified into two types. 1. Inorganic Nutrients Plants obtain inorganic nutrients from the soil and atmosphere through the roots and leaves. These inorganic nutrients are then converted by the plants to organic compounds through the process of photosynthesis. These compounds are used for growth and development of various parts of the plant. 2. Organic Nutrients Carbon-containing chemical compounds of animal or plant origin such as carbohydrates, proteins and fats etc. are called organic nutrients. Nutrition The process of intake of nutrients and its utilization by an organism is called nutrition. A modes of nutrition the way by which an organism obtains its food is termed as the mode of nutrition there are two modes of nutrition that is autotrophic and heterotrophic one autotrophic nutrition the mode of nutrition in which organisms synthesize their own organic food from simple inorganic substances is called autotrophic mode of nutrition. Organisms showing autotrophic mode of nutrition are called autotrophs. All green plants are autotrophs. 2. Heterotrophic nutrition Organisms that depend upon other organisms for their food are called heterotrophs and their mode of nutrition is called heterotrophic mode of nutrition. For example, all animals and fungi are heterotrophs. Types of heterotrophs Heterotrophs can be classified into three types on the basis of their mode of nutrition. Mode of Nutrition 1. Breaking down the complex food into simple substances outside their body and then absorbing them. Examples Some fungi, yeast, mushrooms and carnivorous plants. 2. Breaking down whole food into simple substances inside their body. Examples Human beings, cow, 
cat, etc. 3. Deriving nutrition from host organism, plants or animals without killing them but harming them. Examples Parasites External Parasites Cascuta Ticks Lice Leeches etc. Internal Parasites Tapeworms etc. Steps of Nutrition With the increase in complexity of organisms, some of the organs of the body become specialized to perform specific functions. These specialized organs together constitute a complex digestive system. There are five main steps of nutrition found in all animals. Step 1. Ingestion Meaning Taking in of food Location Mouth Step 2. Digestion Breaking down complex food into simpler components mechanically and with the help of enzymes Location Mouth Stomach and Intestine Step 3. Absorption Absorbing soluble digested food into the blood Location Intestine Step 4. Assimilation Taking the absorbed food to the cells and tissues of the body for producing energy or for growth and development of the body or store it for future use. Location Entire Body Step 5. Adjustment Throwing the undigested and unabsorbed residues of food out of the body. Location Anus Nutrition in Human Beings The intake of food, digestion, absorption and associated processes take place with the help of specific organs in human beings. These organs constitute the digestive system and include the alimentary canal and digestive glands. Alimentary canal consists of a long muscular tube which starts with the mouth and includes the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and anus. The alimentary canal also includes digestive glands such as salivary glands, liver, pancreas, gastric glands which help in digestion. Mouth It is the foremost part of alimentary canal. The food is crushed here with the help of teeth. Salivary glands secrete saliva which helps in crushing and converting the food in the form of bolus. Saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase which partially digests starch that is breaks down the complex molecules of starch into simpler molecules of maltose. Thus the digestion starts in the mouth. Esophagus This partly digested food is carried down to the J-shaped stomach through a tube known as esophagus. Movement of food from the mouth to the stomach is assisted by rhythmic contraction and relaxation of muscles of the esophagus. This rhythmic movement is termed as peristaltic movement. 
stomach. As food reaches the stomach, it stimulates the gastric glands present in the inner walls of the stomach to secrete gastric juice. Gastric juice comprises of three main components. A. Hydrochloric acid. This creates acidic medium for enzyme pepsin to digest proteins and also kills the microorganisms if present in the ingested food. B. Mucus. It forms a layer over the inner wall of the stomach thereby protecting it from the action of acid and enzyme. And C. Pepsin. Enzyme pepsin helps in partial digestion of proteins. The muscular walls of the stomach churn the food and help in proper mixing of the food with gastric juices. Sphincter muscles at the junction of stomach and small intestine regulate the release of small amount of partly digested food into the small intestine. Small intestine This is a long tube about 5 to 6 meters in length which fits into the compact space of the belly due to extensive coiling. The small intestine has a diameter smaller than the large intestine. Hence it is called the small intestine. The length of the small intestine differs in different animals based on the type of food they eat. Small intestine receives pancreatic juice from the pancreas, intestinal juices from the walls of intestine and bile juice from the liver. The partly digested food coming from the stomach is acidic in nature. It has to be made alkaline as the enzymes present in pancreatic and intestinal juices act only in alkaline medium. The liver, which is the largest gland of the body, secretes the bile juice, which is stored in the gall bladder. It is released into the small intestine as food enters the small intestine. Bile juice turns the acidic medium of food into alkaline and also breaks large fat globules into smaller ones making it easier for the enzymes to act upon. Bile juice and pancreatic juice enter the intestine through a common duct. Pancreatic juice contains digestive enzymes like trypsin for digestion of proteins, lipase for digestion of fats and pancreatic amylase for digestion of carbohydrates. The enzymes in the pancreatic juices convert the proteins to amino acids, complex carbohydrates to glucose and fat to fatty acids and glycerol, thus completing the digestion process. All the components of food, that is carbohydrates, proteins and fats are completely digested and absorbed in the small intestine. The wall of the small intestine has numerous finger-like projections known as villi which increase its surface area. The digested food is absorbed by these villi which are richly supplied with blood vessels. The absorbed nutrients 
are taken to each and every cell of the body through the blood and utilized by all the cells for obtaining energy. Unused glucose is stored in the liver in the form of glycogen. The unabsorbed food, water and salts are passed on to the large intestine. Large intestine It is about 1.5 meter in length and wider in diameter than the small intestine. It has no digestive function. The walls of the large intestine have villi which absorb most of the water and salts. The remaining material converts into feces. The feces are excreted out of the body through the anus. This is known as ejection. This ejection is controlled by sphincter muscles. Summary of Digestion in Animals 1. Alimentary Canal 2. Digestive glands 